get something out of it, God bless you. And I am preaching this from my soul, from my heart, and from my expectations. And I hope you get something. Second Kings. Chapter 8. 1 to 6. And one verse or two from Joel. Second Kings. Chapter 8. One to six. How many of you think that you can have more in 24? Be honest with me. I need feedback. I don't know about you. But me, I don't just want more. I need more. I need more of a lot of things, and I will mention them to you and hope that you can identify and, and, and uh, celebrate. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, quote with me. How much more. Say the word. How much more. more will your heavenly father give good things to them that ask of him? I have a word for that. I have a Bible for that. So I am expecting more in 24. And uh, let me read this text. Second Kings. Chapter 8, verse 1. Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life. Keyword, restored. Restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and sojourn wherever you can. Find a place for the Lord had called for a famine. And it shall come upon the land for seven years. I read a post today. <laughs> Made me chuckle. The famine has already begun in some people's lives. And this fellow posted, he said, listen, that's the day. I, I'm not bragging, but I have enough money to last me to the end of this year. <laughs> the famine has begun. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines. Seven years. It came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines and she went forth to cry unto the king for her household and her land. It was gone. It was lost. Somebody took it. There were squatters on a property. And the king talked with Jehazi, the servant of the man of God, Elisha, saying, Hey, tell me, I pray thee, talk to me about all the great things that Elisha had done. Now, every verse here is pregnant with about three or four points. So I'm, I don't want to touch them yet. I, I just want you to know it's loaded. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored, second time mentioned, restored a dead body to life,
that behold, the woman whose son he had restored, the third time you see the word restored, to life, cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Jehazi, with astonishment, said, My lord, my lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elijah had restored four times. Restored. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, It was so. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore five times. This is a passage of restoration. And there are two restorations I want to show you here. Restore all that was hers and all the fruit of the field since the day she had left the land until now. And my topic. Is bundling all of that. Now there are about four sermons I felt I could have preached. And they were all would be fitting like when. They were about to cross the Jordan. From the wilderness to the promised land. I felt tempted to preach on the crossover. Crossing over from this year to next year. I didn't think that was the right word. This Burnt in my heart, and I want to share with you. We, this is my topic, we can expect more because he will surely restore in 2024. I am convinced that whatever you have lost, as the text will show, whatever you have lost, your family, your health, your joy, your income, your property, your, your relationship, whatever you have lost, I am believing that in my life and maybe in yours, there will be full restoration. Somebody say restore. Restore, restore. restore. in 2024. Restore. Hallelujah. Now this, this, this text is very full of truth. And each, each line I may present two or three thoughts I want you to think. And if, if, if you want to make notes, you can because it's rich and you, you may not remember everything. I want to give you the theme or the big picture. The, the big picture is this woman had kept Elisha, built a house, a little room on her wall. She, she was very rich. So that when Elijah would pass by, he would have a place to sleep. He put a, she put a bed, a chair, a table, and a lamp. Well, that was plenty of furniture in those days. So she fixed up the man of God well, and he would abide. And so he, Elisha said to Jehazi, talk to this woman. What can we do for her? It says a backdrop now. I want to show you the two restorations. She said, Lord, we, we don't have any kids. Elijah said, tell her that at this time next year, you will have a son. Amen. It happened. Fourteen years later, the boy was with his father in the field. And he cried out. Father, father, my head, my head. He got a sunstroke. And he, he sent her back home to her mother. Take her to her mother. You know, dads are sometimes useless. <laughs> they can't fix kids. Send her to her mother. She kept, her, kept him on, on her lap. And he died. I preached several times on that. When your miracle dies. When the thing that God himself gave you slips away. Don't tell me it's not possible. The miracle died. And I don't know how much time between that resurrection 
and the famine took place. But it will be seven years longer. Let's assume he was 14. One year later, he died. And the famine, Elijah talked. And seven years would pass by. The kid is about 21, 22 years old now. The first restoration, I'm telling you now, and then there's a second restoration that's going to happen. And, and my theme is, in this woman's life, she had a story to tell. But it was an old one. She's going to tell a new story. And this is my big picture theme. God is about... To write a new chapter in your old book. Your old story is going to give way for a new adventure. And so be ready. I've got 20 minutes or less. So. I believe in more. Even Zacchaeus believed in more. He said, Lord, if I take anything from any man by false accusation, I'm going to give him four times more. And if Zacchaeus is willing to give four times more, how much more will your heavenly father give you? Come on, say more. I want more from God. Hallelujah. Okay, verse 1. Then spake Elisha unto the woman. First thought. God is still speaking to people. God spoke then and he's speaking today. What's the problem? We are listening, but we are not obeying. This woman listened and she obeyed. She did what the man of God told her to do. And I am advising you to do what the Bible says to do. Do what the word of God says to do. Not just be a listener, but a doer. Can I hear somebody? Oh, my little buddy there. A preacher in the making. Thank you, Jesus. Say it loud. Thank you, Jesus. Look at that. Look at that. Elijah spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life. Let me mention briefly the first restoration. Adam was God's first son. When he died, all mankind died. But when Jesus came, the last Adam, all who would believe in him would live again. So that the life that was lost in Adam is restored in Jesus Christ. That's the first restoration. You who were lost in sin, God restored you to a higher glory, a greater sonship than Adam. Can I hear an amen? If there's anything God is willing to do, is to restore you. Not only to your former story, but to a better glory. I got to run. He said to her, <clears throat> Arise and go. Listen to me. You can't sit when God tells you to move. You know why some of us are not making progress? Because God spoke to us, told us what to, to do, and we didn't do it. Arise and go. She got up. She listened to the word of God. And she obeyed it. Arise and go you and your household. And sojourn wherever you can. Now watch. What, what, this is interesting. God told her to go but he didn't tell her where to go. Sometimes God doesn't give you all the information. And waits for your journey of faith to begin. And as you journey he will show you more light. I have driven to New York many times in the night and my headlight could only show about two or three hundred feet. 
I didn't have enough light when I left here directly to New York. But every mile I traveled, I got more light to see in my journey. And I am telling you, as you walk by faith, you may not know all the details of tomorrow. But if God sent you, if God told you to go, go in faith. He will provide a place for you. This woman was rich. And this second thought is, no matter who you are, however wealthy, however poor, we will have good times and bad times. I don't know if anybody whose life has been a bed of roses without thorns. I don't know anybody who had a, such a beautiful life. That they never cried. Or their heart was never broken. Or they didn't lose something that they cherished. Second thought is that season change even to the fortunate. But I have good news for you. Every famine has an end. You didn't read the label right. It has an expiry date. And the famine that you've been going through, get ready to reap the second restoration. I don't know what the famine is. Maybe for seven years you had no joy. For seven years you had no peace. For seven years your family was broken and crushed by this and by the other. For seven years your health has deteriorated and you can hardly move. But I am here to tell you that God is about to restore Five times in this passage, restoration is mentioned. God cannot lie. Seasons change. But God is a present help in the time of trouble. God is so punctual. Sometimes you think he's delaying. And where is the promise, Lord? I've been waiting so long. Well, if he said seven years, bro, it's not going to be six and a half. If he said seven, it's going to be exactly at the end of seven. God's timing is perfect. Faith. Woman had faith, obedience, and patience. Very clear in Hebrews that what some of us need is faith and patience. Before we obtain the promises of God. I know patience is a tough one. I know waiting is long and hard. But that's what he said. If you wait. Let patience have a perfect way in you. When it's finished. You will be mature. And you will lack nothing. Don't be hurry and push God. That's called the Hagar's syndrome. The Hagar's mistake. God, you're taking too long. My husband is getting old. Let me do something about it. When God gave you a promise, wait for that promise. He will never fail you. He will never fail you. So we go on, verse 4. And the king. Thank you. And the king talked with Jehazar, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee. Now, there are some points here I want to just have you notice. Actually, people are fascinated with the miraculous and they want to hear about it. The king said, tell me all the wonderful things Elisha did. When you are talking to people, they really don't want to hear your troubles. They want to hear your miracles. How many miracles can you recall in your life that you can talk about? People in high places really don't know God. And they want to know God. I can say this safely. I have an invitation from a very high-powered leader in the world. He's a prime minister. Well-recognized. And what he wants from me 
is to tell him why we have so many miracles in the Bible. I made appointments to go and see him, but it didn't work because he's very busy. But I have the standing appointment. I have his personal telephone number. And so, why I'm saying that is because there are people in high places, kings, presidents, prime ministers, who want to hear about the miraculous and somebody got to go and tell them. Go tell it, go tell it, go tell it. Somebody's got to go. Somebody's got to be a messenger to the high and to the low. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray for me. It came to pass, as he was telling in the process of speaking, he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life. Uh, for four things I want you to notice in this. Firstly, People will talk about you. Whether you're good or bad, people will talk. But you got to give them something good to talk about. You got to tell them how God answered your prayers. You got to tell them how God restored the thing that you lost. You have to have a testimony. For people to tell your story. And there is no better compliment. That if somebody in their witnessing. Can refer to you as a testimony of God's saving grace. You have to tell them. And let people tell them how God answered your prayer. Even a while back. And that you have the confidence. That he's going to answer your prayer again. That's why she cried unto the king. Your story, thirdly, will be heard in high places. God is going to exalt you so that your testimony will be heard in high places. Big people will be talking about you, little people. That's the power of God. The four lepers who brought, who went to the enemy's camp and discovered the abundance there, they went and told the king. And his household. When big things happen to little people. Little people must have a big heart. To spread the good news. Amen. If you live it. Others will tell it. And no matter what they say about you. The truth will survive. Every lie that is told about you. And let them talk. You live truth. And the truth will destroy the lies. Somebody said, I'd rather have one man talking, ill speaking me to the whole world than to have the whole world ill speak me to one man. People will talk. Let them talk, but give them something good to say. Can I hear an amen? See, the occupiers, the... The squatters said that this was their property because they stayed in it seven years. And the law, as if in Florida, if you stay in somebody's house for one night with your clothes, they have to, they have to legally evict you. So be careful how you're keeping people and who you're keeping in your house. So they felt that they were the owners because they <laughs> because. No, if you're paying rent, that's different. <laughs> so the woman came and she began to cry to the king. I have nine more minutes, eight more minutes. Uh, the woman cried to the king for her house and for her land. I am telling you that no matter what you've lost, there's a higher authority you can go to and cry. You cry to your poor pastor, he might be just as you or even worse. <laughs> you cry to a friend and they say, oh, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's about it. But if you cry to the king of glory, if you cry to the higher power, if you cry to the God who hears an answer, I guarantee you, your prayers will be heard from high and you will get your answer. And Jehazi said, my Lord, that is the woman 
son, and that is her son that I have been telling you about. You can't stop people from pointing their fingers at you. But make sure that when they point, they're pointing to the truth. That's a woman. When you point out somebody, don't be afraid to say, you see that brother? That brother helped me. Why are you afraid to give people credit? Give honor to whom honor is due. Give credit to whom credit is due. You don't have to publish it in the newspapers, but if you're testifying and somebody was good to you, please honor that person. Say, look, that sister helped me when I was in trouble. That brother prayed for me when I needed prayer. Come on, somebody. You can't stop them from pointing fingers, but let them point to the truth. Miraculous evidences cannot be hidden. Here is living proof. King, this is the lady, and this is a son. This was not accidental. This was providential. In life, you just don't meet some people by accident. There's a des destiny divinely appointed. I may give you this quickly. I, I remember when I was in New York, I had a driver's license. I had a social security for banking, but I, I didn't have a green card. I, actually, they had sent me back home. So that's a, another story why. <laughs> but the only thing I could do was drive. So I got a job, and I'll never forget this guy. His name is Zaro. They had five bakeries. And he overworked me. Seven days from seven in the morning to seven at night. Sometime I would get home 11 because go pick him up, take him to the gym, then take him to the five bakeries. I'd get a pie for lunch. I have to take him home, let him nap. Then five o'clock, I have to wait downstairs, pick him up. He's going to collect his girlfriend. They're going to go for dinner. And then go to the theater, and I have to be waiting, and then take him home. Then I have to take the 11 o'clock train. I worked about 80 hours, and he paid me $200 a week. And I said, Lord, something is wrong here. And while sitting in the car one day, I was reading the job section. And I saw this. A garage, a parking car garage needed somebody immediately and you have to be able to drive stick shift so i went to the job site corner of 61st street upper east side and i went to the guy and said hey i hear you're hiring i am interested he said who tell you we're hiring <laughs> we're not hiring i pulled the newspaper out I said, look, you have it advertised here. I'm talking about accident and in, in Providence, okay? He said, wait a minute. We did not advertise that. That was the last year invitation they managed to repeat. He said, but by the way, I fired a guy yesterday and I need somebody today. Ain't no accident. It's Providence. So I went in the office and signed up. She said, okay, I'm going to give you $4.50. I said, Lord, $4.50 an hour? I've been making $5 an hour. So I asked her, I said, you sure it's $4.50 an hour? She said, no, sir, it's $4.50 a week. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the king appointed a certain officer and said to him, go and restore all that was hers. Give her back a house. Give her back a land. Give her back a fruit. And make them pay rent for the seven years. You talk about God.
Joel 2, 24. And your floors shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Seven years have gone, eaten up everything. But God said, I will restore the years. Hey, you're going to walk again. You're going to be a young person again. You're going to vibrantly live again. Your life is going to have a restart. God is pressing the restart button in three minutes. God, I, 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 I praise God if you receive it, but, but this is for me and my family. We can expect more because he will surely restore in 2024. Could you give God praise? He's about to write a new chapter in your life. Get that clock ready to strike midnight. And remember, after that, don't go home. Don't leave. We're going to do the candlelight. Can we start saying praise the Lord? Where's the countdown? I am ready. I am ready for restoration. Full restoration. I gave you the word. I didn't make up anything. Five times restoration is the life, first restoration, and the second restoration is everything that you'd lost. You lost family, you lost wealth, you lost health, you lost hope. Whatever you lost, God is able to restore. Everybody's got a candle. 17, 16, 14. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year! We made it! We made it! Hallelujah! No, don't move around yet. You'll greet afterwards, please. Stay with me. Dim the lights. Receive the light. Pass it on to somebody. Let it try.
to 2024. May you have more. God bless you. Put on back the lights. Take the candle home as a souvenir. And now you can hug and spread the joy. Thank you all. See you Wednesday night for Bible study. Have a better new year.